Awesome. <clears throat> How's it going, guys? Well, filming on a new camera. I got a, uh, let's see, this is a Nikon D3400. And it's with the, just came with the 18-55 uh, to 55 kit lens. But I got it set up here on a tripod, and this is the first video I'm taking with it. Actually, I think I'm talking a little bit too loud. I need to talk softer. I'm looking at the, uh, I'm looking at the audio level on the screen. Anyhow, I have a uh, 40, 42 inch uh, 404 chain, a steel chain. This is a, uh, a semi chisel. Uh, this is a hundred and was it 156 drive links? I believe it is. No, excuse me, 123. 123 drive links, and this is a semi-skip chain, and I'm going to uh, convert this into a ripping chain. So all I did was just go to my steel uh, saw dealer, saw shop, and uh, got a uh, 123 drive link 404 semi-chisel chain, and I'm going to show you guys how I convert these to the Granberg style uh, ripping chain. Um, first thing you got to do is you got to take uh, two cutters in a row, a right hand cutter and a left hand cutter, and you have to uh, uh, grind the uh, top plate, uh, grind half of the top plate off. So what I need to do is half of this top plate right here, I need to cut half this top plate off right here on one right hand cutter and then a left hand cutter. And then the next two, this one and this one, I leave alone. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to mark which uh, cutters I'm going to cut half the top plate off. So this one right here. So one right hand, one left hand, skip one, skip another, one right hand, one left hand. Is that even in frame? Yeah, kind of. Cool. Right, left, skip, skip. Right, left skip one skip two okay skip one skip two okay so now I'm here at the end of the chain or I'm at the end of the chain now so now so what I did was is this this cutter here is marked focus 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 there we go I marked that cutter I marked that cutter and now if you notice here I'm at the beginning of the chain again Oh, let me zoom you guys out here. Let's try that. Okay, I'm here at the end. Uh, here's the uh, here's the end of the chain. This is the first mark cutter I marked. There's the second. So now I got one, two, three cutters left. Uh, that focus. There we go. So these two I marked, and then I have. I'm supposed to skip this one. Skip this one. Then I just got one more before I grind again grind the top plate off again but these two are already marked so these guys I'll just leave these three I'll just leave these three uh, cutters intact and they'll just be get ground at zero degrees okay here we go so here's my uh, here's my two cutters I need to grind off one there one there a right hand and a left hand and then I'm gonna skip the next two all I do is it's real simple all you gotta do is get you a pair of these uh, well any pliers will work I really like these Nipex uh, these ones, these are some of the best pliers I've ever used in my life. So, if you have, if you guys know what these are all about, you know what's up. Anyhow, all I'm going to do is just grab the uh, grab the tie straps, just like that, and hold them in my uh, hold them in my uh, pliers, get a good grip, and uh, turn a bench grinder on, and grind half of the uh, top plate off. It's pretty simple.
just like that. I don't know how well you guys can see it. Let me, uh, let me move you over here. And back it's as here. simple as that. So there you guys can see how much of the, uh, uh, let's see here, come on focus. There we go. There you guys can see about, I ground off about half the, uh, half the top plate there. Here's the, uh, here's the next tooth I have to grind off. So now you can see how much I ground off. Just like that. I got all the, uh, top plates ground off. So, uh, just to, uh, uh, just to say again, so here's our, uh, here's our master link, or this is, uh, this is where I always start, uh, with these yellow links, that way I can get my count right. So, just to say again, first two cutters, a right hand cutter, left hand cutter, are, these are called, considered scoring cutters now, you grind off half the top plate, a right and a left, okay, the next two behind that, right, left, these are called clearing cutters, okay, you leave these alone. The next two after that, a right and a left. You cut the uh, half the top plate angle off. Clearing, uh, scoring cutters. One, two. Right, left, don't touch. Right, left, uh, scoring cutters. Clearing cutters. Scoring cutters. Clearing cutters. Scoring cutters. Clearing cutters. Scoring. Clearing. clearing. And now, if you could see, I'm back to the master link. So we have three clearing cutters in a row. One, two, three. That's fine. Uh, that's no big deal. Um, I would do this on my uh, Oregon uh, chain grinder, but uh, it's uh, out of service right now. Uh, something's wrong with the. Uh, uh, something's wrong with the. Uh, uh, I guess they call it a carriage that sits up top. It's not keeping the angles right, so I have another one on order. And uh, But I need to get this done right away. I got a job coming up, a milling job coming up, and I need a chain. I need another chain at least. I only have one that's made up now. Uh, this is, uh, by the end of the day, I'm gonna have uh, three in total made up, three of these chains made up. Um, but anyways, I'm just using the, uh, the Grandberg filing joint. This is just so I can get the angles, you know, perfectly dead on right away the first uh, uh, the first shot and then uh, after that then I can uh, I can hand file it but so I got this guy up here and I have the angle set for zero degrees for the clearing cutters okay all I did was I went to the master link and then I advanced the chain uh, to the uh, to the closest left hand clearing cutter and that those are the ones I'm gonna do first I'm gonna file the left hand clearing cutters um, so uh, to start off with um, I'm just going to to start off with. I'm just going to set uh, uh, set the tooth length, uh, just so I uh, file off enough of the uh, enough of the tooth. That way, it's straight across the uh, the angle is the top plate angle is straight across at zero degrees. Um, but oh, excuse me. I wanted to set the depth just so that I filed just enough to get the entire face of the front of the cover cutter just to get the entire face of the cutter um, a square. Square with the top, is that in focus? Let's see if I focus again. Don't quite look in focus. Let's see here. That's pretty good, I think. Is that in focus? Yeah, it's in focus. So I just want to uh, file off just enough of the uh, tooth just so I can get the, uh, the top plate uh, straight across at zero degrees. So uh, I'm just gonna look at it, look at it right now, and file until uh, the entire face of the uh, top plate is been touched by the file, and that looks pretty good there. Okay, so now I'm gonna set my depth. I'm gonna bring it up so it touches the uh, so it touches the bar. I'm not grinding anything, so I'm going to turn, go in, uh, let's try a quarter of a turn. There we go. Started taking a bite. Feels pretty good there. Okay, uh, I'm going to advance the chain to my next, 
left hand clearing tooth and go from there. After I get this first, uh, after I get this first bit done, let's see how's that angle look. That looks about right. Another thing I do to make sure I got my angles right is I got a, uh, I got a little uh, uh, protractor here that I put up. I set it at 60 degrees to make sure that I got my, uh, make sure I got my angles more or less about right. Anyways, after I get all the uh, teeth done, then I'll go back through and I'll get out the gullet by hand. And I'll touch the, uh, I'll make sure I get all the rakers set correctly. Um, I'll talk about the raker rakers later on in the video. But just for now. This really doesn't take uh, take that long to do with this this uh, this gauge right here. This, this Grand Bird filing joint it really doesn't take that long to do. done. I would say the only place that hand filing is faster is uh, when well with the, by hand when you file it by hand you don't have to set the gauge up in the first place but uh, that this thing works just as fast and I know I get my angles just dead nuts right on. I'm not as good of a hand filer as uh, Buck and Billy Ray Smith yet keyword yet. Well, this is odd. Well, I switched to uh, I switched this uh, carriage around to do the uh, left hand cutters, and it almost looked like the top plate angle was off. So I stood back and started looking at this thing, at this uh, at this filing guide, and I put a straight edge here. I put my uh, put my protractor up to it and with the uh, with this angle set at zero degrees it's not square to the bar and yeah, it's not square so that's weird yeah I have this uh, I have this setting up here to get the angle right this way oh that's loose Hmm. There, let me set this guy up here again and see if I can get this square. Well, it's not loose that much. Oh, well, kind of is. Yeah, look at that. That's really odd. Oh, that nut's tight. Maybe if I break that loose and... Change it to five degrees. Did that fix it? No, now it's way off the other way. Huh. Well, there's your problem right there. This thing's not perfectly square. I never got a chance to, uh, I got the instructions on, uh, off that, uh, 
His name is George Lawrence. He has a uh, YouTube video on these Granberg filing joints. And he's done a lot of modifications to them to get them to uh, be just right on. I figured it'd be good enough for for just uh, round filing like I'm doing, but no, that angle's off. Maybe by one degree? That's why my top, that's why it, yeah, look at that. It's off by one degree. Yeah, so what he did is he drilled and tapped some holes in the side of the uh, frame here. That way he could adjust it to get it perfectly level. Or square with the bar. Hmm. Well, it looks like I'm definitely going to have to do all that. And guys, well, I got my uh, scoring cutters and my clearing cutters all, uh, all filed up. Every single one is the exact same length. Uh, and every single scoring cutter is the same length as the clearing cutters. So they're all the exact same length down to a couple thousandths of an inch. Um, so before I hit the uh, before I hit the depth gauges, guess what time it is? It's gullet time. Uh, but before I go any further, I want to say that the uh, the scoring cutters, according to Granberg, the scoring cutters need to be uh, filed at 20 degrees, and the clearing cutters need to be filed at zero degrees. So. Uh, just to uh, update you on that, and then also um, I'm going to uh, I'm going to touch the rakers or the depth gauges, and I'm just I have an Oregon uh, an Oregon brand uh, depth gauge tool, and that'll take a, take the uh, rakers down to uh, to twenty five thousandths. Um, according to Granberg, the scoring cutters need to be at thirty thousandths below, and the clearing cutters at twenty five. Um, but I don't have a uh, I don't have a thirty thousandths uh, depth gauge, so I'm just going to go twenty five thousandths across the board. Um, I do have one of those Oregon style uh, a depth gauge, those ones, those card, those card looking ones. I do have one of those on order, so but I don't have it yet. Um, I'm just going to use the uh, Oregon uh, one that goes in between, that spans the uh, distance. Let's see, I got one right here somewhere. Here Use the Oregon one that spans the difference uh, in between the uh, depth gauges. So I'm just going to file them like that. So it's uh, gullet time, I guess. Okay, guys. Just finishing up the uh, rakers now. Just doing, uh, using my... Uh, Twenty-five degree Oregon uh, guide here. One thing I really noticed that makes a big difference in how smooth the chain works is uh, is making sure you round the uh, uh, depth gauge off or round the raker off. Because when you file them like this with these kind of gauges, you get a flat top. The top of the uh, depth gauge is flat. So if you just take your file and Kind of round that off a little bit. Just hit the front. Don't don't get all the way up on top, but just hit the front to to round it off. It makes a pretty big difference on how smooth the uh, how smooth the chain cuts. There we go. Got the uh, sharp side of my file. I know some people say don't leave the uh, guide on there, but these things are so cheap. They're what I can get them for like a dollar a piece. My uh, I get them on uh, special for my saw shop. I can get them for a dollar a piece, and they last. Oh. You can probably file a thousand uh, a thousand depth gauges before you uh, need to get a new one of these. So might as well just leave it on there just so you're not. You could save time instead of taking this on and off, file a little bit, put it back on, file, and keep checking that way. I just leave it on there. Might as well. These files are cheap too. And that's it. One chain down, that probably took, oh, from new chain, cutting the, uh, cutting the uh, top plates off on half of the teeth, basically, half of the cutters. 
filing the right edges, uh, angles, filing the gullet out of every tooth, touching up the rakers to make sure they're all dead on. Probably, probably took me about uh, maybe 45 minutes. 45 minutes. It would have been a lot faster if I had my. Uh, probably would have only took 20 minutes if I used my uh, Oregon uh, uh, grinder, but. Yeah, there's something wrong with it now. But by hand, doing it with the Granberg, the filing joint, this guy right here. Doing it with that. And then uh, getting the rakers out, or getting the gullet out in its own separate in its own separate step. And then doing the, the depth gauges. Probably took me about 40, 45 minutes or so. So, all right. You guys have a good one. I'm going to go inside and edit this video up and post it oh i would like to say um i did uh i did get video of us getting uh the trailer load of uh slabs out of the hills and i took a i took a really nice uh really nice time lapse time lapse of the entire thing but uh come to find out there's no application uh there's no app that you can download to your phone where you can edit time lapses even GoPros, the GoPro video editing app, you can't even do it on theirs. And that was really surprising because GoPro, they're always talking about, oh, doing time lapses this, time lapse that. Well, their, their, uh, their video editing app, application, software for the f iPhone, you can't even do it. So I was uh, pretty disappointed with that. And then I had some other footage for it, but I just couldn't. I don't know what's going on. I, I got to get a computer so I could uh, do all my editing on a laptop or on the computer rather than on my phone. But I was just having a heck of a time with the, the audio on that video. So I got it all made and everything, and I made it. I made the video twice, actually. And each time the, the audio was uh, very annoying. So I didn't, even, I didn't even post it up. But check it out over here. I do have all the slabs up here, so it was quite the adventure to get the uh, to get it out of there. Obviously, you can tell how muddy the trailer is and everything. So, I got the 880 apart because I'm gonna put that uh, put that chain I just made on there. And yep, there she all is. Got it out of there. I really like this trailer. It's a uh, Diamond C. It's a Diamond C uh, 7,000 pound dump trailer. It's a 5 by 10. I like the 5 by 10 because it's only as wide as the pickup. It's only as wide as the trucks are. So you can get it into a lot of places. So anyways, 880, 661, 461, 261. Oh, and HT, what is that? HT131. I got a nice uh, pole saw too. I've had that for a while. Um, I've used it quite a bit actually. It's all nice and broken. I've probably got 10, 15 tanks of gap, uh, fuel through it, but uh, never videoed it. Videoed it. I'll have to do a little uh, video on that guy there too. There's my dog Cash. Mm -hmm. He's a good dog. He looks like uh, looks like Buck and Billy Ray's dog. Uh, what's his name? Chester. Looks like Chester. He's a, uh, this is a uh, border, co border Collie Kelpie mix. So he's a good dog. And where's the other one? There's the other one right there. That's, uh, her name's Callie. She's a uh, Queensland healer and Australian cattle dog mix. So that one's name is Callie. There's Cash. So, all right, you guys, you have a good one. Stay safe. Uh, how's it going? I just want to make one update. Uh, I went on to uh, Granberg's website just to double check to make sure I was doing my uh, filing angles right for 404 chain. <clears throat> and it turns out that they recommend for 404 chain is to do a 10 degree top plate angle uh, for both clearing cutters and the scoring cutters. Um, uh, on their website, it says that uh, sometimes they use the zero degrees for the clearing cutter and 20 degrees for the scoring cutter 
uh, depending on if they, uh, depending on where they get their chain from. So I'm, I'm not sure I get, I'm not sure I understand why they would change uh, their filing angle if they're, if they have a different source for their chain. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure. But so what I did is I went after I, uh, after I f found out that it's 10 degrees for both, uh, just like a normal ripping chain, I went back through and I uh, uh, refiled the angles. I mean, it wasn't, it literally took maybe five minutes per chain. There, there wasn't much to file off to change the angle to, to 10 degrees. So anyways, uh, before I close this video out, I just wanted to say that is uh, for the 404 chain, it's uh, 10 degrees on both the scoring and the clearing. And on the 3H chain, it's also 10 degrees on both, uh, but sometimes they use 20 degrees and 0 degrees. Uh, so I'm just going to move everything over to 10 and 10. That'll actually make it a lot easier on myself, too. And then I can, uh, uh, instead of uh, sharpening right hand, it'll be a lot faster. I'll have to adjust the, uh, adjust the uh, either my uh, chain grinder or adjust the, uh, this Grandbird jig a lot less. Well, basically half the amount of times uh, if I'm uh, just using 10 degrees throughout the entire uh, chain. So, all right. Thank you, guys. Have a good one.